today we have a look at the Jabe UD1200 soldering station. Now for any of you that have seen my previous videos and seen my previous soldering station, it's fairly obvious that this is uh, some sort of a clone of the actual JBC uh, station and the closest I can see it being to is the JBC CD-2BA. So it has the same sort of uh, holder here, the same coloured silicone uh, sponge holder there. Um, this is slightly different on the on the actual JBC one and uh, this is very similar but I think it's on the other side on the JBC one. So without further ado um, let's dig in and have a look. Inside the box we have a warranty card, a manual which is um, quite Chinese but there's some English towards the end which is uh, potentially quite helpful because all the menus in the actual line itself uh, are in Chinese. They're not actually in English at all. There's a little bit of uh, advertising blurb. Don't quite know why they include that as you know, you've already bought it. Let's see what's inside the box. A high quality travel adapter. Uh, this is the static grounding strap thing for it. A mains lead, which is no good for me because, um, well, I don't live wherever that's used. I'm guessing that's uh, American or something like that. Another mains lead. I think that's Australian. And down here we have the all too familiar hand piece. And uh, this is about as close to uh, a JBC as you could get. I mean, it even feels like the same materials. You know, everything feels, you know, exactly as it should if it were a, a real one. And we also have, let's see if we can get these out. Comes with three tips, but they're sort of odd tips. So you have this kind of like a very thin point curved one. You have this one here, which is again a thin point, just a, a straight, very fine point. Great for, I guess, very small SMD uh, work. And then, where's the other one? And here we have, these aren't my favourite, these ones. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a cutting knife sort of edge thing. I'm uh, not really a fan of those, we'll probably never even use that. But luckily, I already have the the large tipped um, soldering iron, uh, the real JBC one, and that uses one of these. And it has that tip on it, which is pretty much the one I use all the time for my, you know, lumpy soldering, as it were. Uh, while I was at it, I'd also previously bought a compatible tip. Again, this isn't a JVC, it's JND. Um, but this is the same as the tip on the um, the one I just showed you, basically. I just wanted another one of those. So let's have a look at the station itself. Oh, first thing you notice about it is it weighs a bloody ton. Uh, nicely wrapped up in uh, shrink wrap, so let's take that off. I mean, this thing feels properly heavy, properly heavy. I mean, it must be, no, what's it say? On the box it says 2.85 kilos. And uh, yeah, this certainly, it certainly feels, it doesn't feel sort of like a cheap soldering station. It feels pretty good quality. And I suppose you ought to check the buttons. Yeah, they're okay. At least they work. Unlike the first uh, of the new JBCs I got where one of these buttons was actually stuck down. Let's peel, peel that off. Oh, it's better already. It's made it for me. Um, so yeah, it's really, it, it's certainly from what it looks like, uh, it looks unbelievably good. Let's plug its handpiece in and uh, see what that's like. And I'm also gonna put 
the new tip I got in the handpiece. And on the back we have our anti-static connection there. This is where the handpiece plugs in. Standard IEC socket there. This is an, an illuminated rocker switch. And again, it doesn't feel like a, you know, like a really cheap, nasty uh, Chinese one. It actually seems like a really nice quality one. Yeah, the plastic is nice, nice and shiny. It feels good, the action's good. Um, and we've also got a fan here, which is interesting. Um, it'd be interesting to see what that's like, because I don't think the JBC stations have a fan on. It does look like we've got a little bit of plastic missing here. I'm guessing um, that got knocked out during um, transport. I'm not too bothered about that, as it's at the back of it. It won't uh, trigger my OCD or, or anything like that. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Let's put this tip in and uh, I think plug it in and power it up. Okay, let's power this on and uh, see how quickly it heats up. So it looks like it's got a 200 Celsius standby, as you can see we're very, very Chinese up here. Um, let's see if we can see what it's set to. So it's set to set to 350. That is what I normally use my irons at, and I think that's what JBC recommend you use uh, their irons at. Obviously, I'm aware this isn't a JBC, but whatever. Uh, let's pick that up and see how quickly it heats up. Okay, so that is pretty, pretty swift. To me, I think that is on par with with how fast the JBC heats up. That is, that is something else. That is amazing. Uh, certainly a lot quicker than the pace soldering station I had. And obviously once we put the um, tip back in the holder, it then starts cooling it down and then getting ready to go into uh, standby mode. Now it does have lots of Chinese uh, menus, um, none of which obviously I understand. A couple of them um, do seem to have um, some English in them, but that doesn't really bother me because, you know, I only, I only ever turn the temperature up and down. In fact, I hardly ever even do that. So I'm quite happy with just being able to turn the temperature up and down. If I want to try and work out what the menus are, I can have a look in the manual. Or you can actually use Google Translate and just hold it above the screen to, to see, you know, what the effects of the menus are. But it's all the usual stuff like, you know, the standby temperature how long it takes to go into hibernation, um, the usual JBC stuff. And you can hear the fan going now, and that stays on until it goes into hibernation. So I wonder whether it's possible to um, translate that writing into English by modifying its EEPROM. Um, Depends, I suppose, whether it's inside the, the microcontroller or whether it's on a separate ROM. But I might have a look at that in another video. I think what I'd like to do with this video is, um, well, the nice unboxing, obviously, that I've already done, but also perhaps a side-by-side -side comparison between the JB1200 and then my new uh, JBC soldering station. So why don't we have a look at that? And so what we're going to do now is a, a thermal capacity test. I want to see how long it takes to uh, melt this solder onto this piece of copper pipe. I've got two pieces of copper pipe to try it with. So one piece I'm going to use for the JAB, the other piece I'm using for the JBC. I've set both irons to 450 Celsius and they've both got the same size of tip on. So let's give this a go and see, uh, see how well it does. So JBC first. And just let it stabilize, get to temperature. That'll do. And we're really looking for the point when the solder starts flowing onto the copper. And you can see the irons are chucking a load of heat into that. I just want it to kind of flow on. It has actually melted it, and I think it is. Yep, that has, um, that's done it. 
and now we're going to try it with the J Beauty 1200. Again, same sort of size tip. Let's see how long this takes to uh, melt. Again, we can see that the JB is uh, trying to push plenty of heat into that tip. Still not quite there yet. I think we can call that melted. That looks okay to me. So I don't think that was quite as fast as the JBC, but it still did a great job um, considering that it's soldering uh, a great big lump of uh, copper pipe. I think that did um, did a great job. It's one of those things where, you know, because you're kind of melting it with the iron, it can be a little bit difficult to see when the solder starts melting. So it's going to be a little bit approximate, but at least it gives you an idea as to the power of this station. And I'm really, really impressed with the Jabe. Um, I can see me using this quite a lot. I might actually make it my, my daily driver and uh, just sort of run it for a while, build a few ROM boards with it, do some repairs with it, and... Uh, maybe check in in about a month or so and let you guys know how I've been getting on with it. For the moment though, thank you for watching this video. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, please subscribe as well. If you've got anything else you'd like me to um, do with this soldering station, please let me know. Um, but for the moment, thank you very much. Goodbye.